All right, Two Planker Podcast. We're back in Ryan Barrick's RV. Yep. And we're going to interview Monty Wright, English bloke. We're waiting for him to come over. And uh, I'm going to say this. We have turned into the the most annoying versions of ourselves just running around <laughs> doing British accents after hanging out with this kid. Isn't it? So if you don't know him. About to find you're out. You're about to find out how, <laughs> how strong his accent is. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? So He's now we'll just kill some He's time. He's changing right now. He's changing. I don't know if He's he thinks. look good. To be on the podcast. I don't know if he thinks it's on video. <laughs> he probably does. But you know what? Can we video this? We could consider it. Is we it could okay? consider it. Is there any way? Do you have a video camera? We could find a video camera. Um, what were the happenings of today, Tuan? Uh, honestly, not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> We just, oh uh, yeah, I didn't even see this. We had this. an Urkelful day. I forgot to say we this. Did. We're at Mammoth right now. Yeah, yeah new location. location. Yeah, new location. We're here all of July. Uh, I do not think this will be edited edited Indeed. before we leave. So pull up if you're at Mammoth right now. Um, yeah, that's about it, man. Yeah, the setup's right. still firing. If you're listening to this, <laughs> this Mammoth is fully open. It's <laughs> snowing. <laughs> And it's about the same camping setup we had at Hood, so... It's mint. It's mint. And now we're waiting for Monty. He's one of the slower blokes in our crew. I would say so. <laughs> Pretty slow, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> isn't it like? <laughs> hey, Monty! There we go. We got Monty walking in. Monty, we're already rolling, dude. Take a seat. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. We edit it. Don't worry. Do you feel... You don't film it. To feel what? Do you film it? No. No, we don't no, film it. No, no. Yeah, you're happy about that, no? Kind of. Alright, I'm gonna get your mic all set up. So. Alright. You're gonna want it like there. Like right here. Like right in your mouth. Like right here. Alright, Monty. It's cracking. I'm really gonna have to stop myself from doing a British accent during this, dude. It's gonna sound ridiculous if we do it. So, tell everyone why you're at Mammoth right now. Well, you know, there's not much snow in Europe. Hasn't been for a, what seems like the last couple of years, so got to make the most of it. You know, the old Brexit got me pretty hard, so I can only spend 90 days in Europe now. So I got to come find greener pastures. Of course, of course. Why don't you give us the whole rundown of Brexit? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, just <kidding. laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That'd be a waste of time. <laughs> so. A bunch of people got lied to, and now we can't spend any time there. This is about as much as you need to know. Yeah. So, where are you living right now? Let's do that. Instead of going back to the beginning, because we're going to go back to the beginning of your whole life story. But tell everyone oh, where you're man. living, what the scene is like there. Um, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. I live in a little seaside town in um, England called Whitstable. Um, been living there a few years. Grew up pretty close to there. Work maybe 20 minutes from there. Um... Yeah, all pretty chill. I'm not going to be living there for too much longer. Yeah. <laughs> kind of sucks. Um, yeah, moving away soon. Not quite sure where to. Probably just van life for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you live in Lax? Right yeah. Now, like during the winter? Winter time, Lax. Um, yeah, I've been based there for about eight years now. Got a really nice caravan set up in the woods. Um, nice big thing built on the side. So yeah, yeah. it's a nice little home. home it's just permanently home. parked there? Just permanently there, yeah. Which was calm before Brexit and now yeah. not so easy to spend enough time there, but it's, yeah. can't give it up, it's still too nice. Yeah. yeah. So who's your who's your crew over in Lax? You're the uh, first guest that, that has ever even mentioned Lax, by the way. We have no Europeans, son. so it's an damn honor. Son. Um, yeah, crew in Lax is good. It's a, it's a big like drop-in, drop-out community there because a lot of people that do World Cups and everything like that throughout the winter um, kind of base themselves there, but obviously they're traveling a lot of the time. So, you know, people in the like from teams all over kind of dropping in and out of there and then you've got people that are part of the furniture that are there every year like you know you, you won't get around them and i've got a good group of boys from sort of scotland and england and stuff that are there all yeah. the time some live there all year round and that and yeah it's a nice little crew it's a yeah. good little area you want to give any shout outs um you told me you've been hanging out with scrappy a lot oh yeah always big up scrappy scrappy's always uh 
he's he's becoming part of the furniture like so that's for sure like yeah big up scrappy and like big up all my my homies that i ski with they think they know who they are and they're yeah. like yeah. for sure for sure um yeah it's a good that we're seeing it's like it's i feel like you come out here and you notice how much of a community it becomes though you know i think somewhere some places in europe can be a little bit more clicky and stuff than out here and yeah yeah it's pretty nice to be in somewhere that's so open and stuff with the scene because it can get a little bit tiring seeing all the same heads that you yeah friends with that you're not really friends with <laughs> you're friends with like yeah. yeah speaking to someone you're friends with and not really friends with T- tuan what would you like to know first about about monty give um, us something uh Yeah, this man hasn't stopped asking me questions <laughs> since I got here. Fine, it's your favorite color. That's a good one because I'm colorblind as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah. You're colorblind? Yeah, super bit. colorblind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, since, there's, since there's no video for this, it's important to know that if nobody knows what Monty looks like, he is covered in tattoos, neck, <laughs> neck tattoos. He looks like Mac Miller a bit. He's got a face tattoo, <laughs> dermal piercing, but all his tattoos are just in black. It's just black ink. There's no color. Yeah. Is that because you're colorblind or you just don't mess with colored tattoos? No, I'm kind of like a bit um, anally retentive when it comes to putting colors together. So I feel like if there was something permanently there, I wouldn't be able to wear it t-shirt this color yeah yeah <laughs> you know because he's wearing would... a purple t-shirt you can't have like a i don't even know <laughs> yeah like you know you can't have that color scheme going with like yeah, some crazy like orange colors. tattoo yeah, or something yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. you know it's kind of nice to have it that way around than the other way around i feel like yeah it's easier to do it that way for me i know more <laughs> people that have got color tattoos all over that wish they only had black ones and yeah have all black tattoos or like oh yeah, there was some color in there, like for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's never the way it goes, <laughs> dude. So tell us about, dude. Tell us about your childhood. I feel like the tattoos is a natural transition. Yeah. So my folks have owned like a small chain of piercing and tattoo studios since I was born, sort of thing. Mama like had me on her back, like in that shop, like about a week after I was born, sort of thing. So I proper grown up in piercing and tattooing. Um, not mad involved in the industry because I feel again it can be a bit of a bit of a strange one. Um, I think so. There's always been the kind of arms distance to that, which has been nice. But yeah, I all sort of transitioned into piercing a little bit when I was um, sort of 16 or so. Did that for a little bit, um, and then when I was like 19 or so, 19, 20, started. I got an apprenticeship with one of the girls that was there. Shouts out Marley, um, and yeah, kind of learned stuff like with her for like six months a year um just doing all the simple stuff in the shop and that and then you kind of just transition and start pushing yourself and when your sort of drawing level gets up there and your knowledge level gets up there and everything and yeah it's kind of it's a slow burner of a thing to do but it's definitely one of the best ways to make money involving people that there is a thing you know it's nice to be able to send people out the door happy and everything like that and that's a pretty special thing to be able to do so yeah pretty stoked to be able to do that like dude let's focus on tattoos for a minute what is like someone walks in the store and they're like hey i want this tattoo yeah and it's like dude this is the most basic thing you can get like what's that like what i heard that hourglasses are like uh stop like those I mean, stopwatch it kind of comes down to it it's like everything in this world is so subjective like who am i to say like what's a piece of shit for your body yeah. Do you know what I mean? So uh, you can advise and you can show nicer things and this and that and da 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 da. But like at the end of the day, some people are always gonna want what they want. And like if you don't do it, someone else is gonna. And you know, some people might not have that attitude and would prefer to let them walk out the door. But at the end of the day, yeah, everyone's here to make money. You've got to do the things that you know you're not so keen on. And yeah people might not think is so sick like and that leads you to the opportunity to do the nicer stuff you know if someone comes in like i would send people out the door you know you get a 19 year old comes in and they'll be like oh i want like honey on my neck and you're like what do you mean and they're like oh like the word honey and you're like oh cool like what does this mean and it's like oh it's my girlfriend's name you're like oh right like (laughs) been together for like two months or so and it's like no like four weeks and you're like yeah i'm not tattooing a fucking name on your neck you know like so like that sort of thing that's where i draw the line you know like 
girlfriend boyfriends names of like young people again if you're married like who am i to judge your relationship and turn you yeah. out the door like you know but stuff like that you know and obviously there's the dumb stuff that people come in and they're just like yeah but what's the know. dumbest one you've gotten or like just one that's memorable one of the most memorable recent things that happened is like i was tattooing and like one of the girls that was downstairs she answered the phone like to someone and you just kind of overhear her and she's like oh yeah like that shouldn't be a problem no worries like let me just go talk to him like and she gets halfway up the stairs and she's like uh wait wait can you repeat that sort of thing like and then she's like got to the top of the stairs and she's like nah don't i don't think this is a thing like and like she's like let me just like she pulls the phone away fucking um and she's like there's a guy on the phone that's asked if you'll tattoo a chimpanzee and i was like i was like wait what like a like a photo of a chimpanzee like and she was like no nah, that's what i thought he meant like he's saying like can you come to his house and tattoo his chimpanzee he's saying that like he's saying don't worry the chimpanzee will be like sedated and blah 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 and it'll be all in and i was just like i was like obviously no i was like get <laughs> get that number down like if you can go report that number like because it was either some crazy guy that's actually got a chimpanzee that's yeah. should definitely be in prison or it was like environmental health or something seeing if like trying to fuck with the terrorists in the area being like would anyone do this oh wow because i can imagine that's the sort of thing you'd be bored on like a tuesday and be like Let's, i wonder if any terrorists would tower a chimpanzee yeah like, that's like because again like the weird tattoos i do like we all have weird tattoos when you have enough they don't they don't register but that like i don't think i'll ever forget that that's gonna be in my mind for a while like that is crazy it's pretty nice <laughs> <laughs> did he say what he wanted to draw on the chimp uh, we didn't get that if, i think if i was on the phone it would have been a lot more e like a lot easier to kind of figure out what's going on yeah and i would have maybe got a bit more information yeah. or like you know even tried to get his address to like actually then report his address and yeah. not just like the number or whatever but yeah, that all happened kind of fast, and I was just there with a machine in my hand, just confused as fuck. Yeah, like, yeah. With, I've got customers there just giggling, like, and yeah. I'm like, this is nuts. Like, it's crazy, dude. Yeah. Do you feel like, so you have a face tattoo, which to me is a huge, a huge deal. Like, getting a face tattoo. But yeah. it's funny, because you, you talked about this when we first mentioned it. Yeah, when yeah. I look at you straight on, I can't see it, because yeah. it's right on your temple. But anyways... <laughs> Did you notice that before you got the face tattoo and after, like people started looking at you differently? Like strangers, are they a little bit more intimidated? Because I feel yeah, like that's people. the common. Yeah, thing. I mean, I feel like in England, like it's a very because you put yourself in a certain situation. Like, yeah, people are gonna be a little bit bad. There's so yeah, it's so condensed. There's so many people, and there's so many tattoos, like head to toe on people, and some are so bad. Like, you know, I think the you've got work that looks kind of nice like people stop they see through it a little bit more yeah. feel like now whole necks tattooed and like or like both sides of my necks tattooed and face tattooed and i go to somewhere like switzerland yeah there's definitely a bit of a yeah like old ladies cross the street and stuff like that <laughs> like <laughs> yeah but england's not too bad like especially surrounding yourself with the people that come into the shop and customers and everything. Like, no one's gonna Think anything of it but yeah no one's gonna think it's weird that their tattoo artist has a face tattoo yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but you go to some restaurant or something like that and like but yeah. then it comes with it just comes with the package you know if you if you dress all right and like you don't seem like you're gonna cause trouble like people don't care that much like, yeah but. do you ever get people asking you i mean we'll we can move on from tattoos soon it's so interesting dude do you ever get people asking you to do like gang tattoos or anything like uh not even, it doesn't even have to be like gang tattoos where just like something that you like don't feel comfortable drawing or like it could even be like a fucking swastika or whatever. Like do you get it do you get people asking you to do like See, over the line that, stuff? That's sort of stuff like for sure I'd like that's where I'd draw the line. Like yeah. I wouldn't like nothing if I like actively okay, there's like there's a level to like, you know, being in disagreement. Like, you know, you can like two people can have opposing views and they're not that gnarly, but it does get to a certain level where like you don't want yourself associated with anything like that and yeah. like the fact that they would do something like that to us that like you don't like you don't want to spend time with these people you don't yeah. want to like and you're not in a you don't want them in your shop yeah either. you don't want them there like and you're not necessarily like in a position to like 
you know, start trying to like fight these people or something yeah. like that. You know, like yeah. you just like you just get it done. Like I like I remember with, like one of the girls like in the shop. She for ages was like I'm in an iron about wearing this t-shirt because she didn't think it was really work appropriate and stuff like that. And then like the one day and it was like a t-shirt that just said fuck racist on it in like massive letters sort of thing she was like nah today's the day i'm gonna wear this and it had just so happened to be the day like some like neo-nazi wanted to get their like ear pierced or something like that in it and she was like fucking yes sorry like <laughs> we do i was just like just like presenting the t-shirt the whole time just like and then you go to her the person and send them on the way <laughs> like, that's wild yeah yeah but that's like different like yeah branding someone with something like a specific can't do that shit yeah like, for sure um no money's worth it you yeah know I mean? like, yeah all right last last tattoo question because i'm just wondering what's the uh covering up stuff you ever have to cover up like any other any person's bad work or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure oh it was kind of nice like recently what like uh maybe two months ago a month ago kind of got to go full circle one of my boys uh you know was one of the first people that let me tattoo him and like one of my best friends from back home shouts out cheat because yeah always cheat like but <laughs> yeah how fucking let me he let me like cover up like one of the first tattoos that i'd done on someone so like it was like a dodgy old microphone that i did on his ribs like and we covered it with a pretty sick dark coin and stuff like that and you know something like that's like that's kind of nice for it to come full circle but yeah i do cover up so when people come into the shop and yeah kind of fix dodgy work and stuff yeah. like that you know i don't like i don't mind doing that sort of thing like yeah. it's kind of <laughs> kind of funny like well it is dude it is funny that you're covered in tattoos because like we were at the bar the other night and immediately like how like are you pretty much always talking about them because that girl immediately was like oh here's my tattoo here's an idea i have of one and you're yeah. like yeah cool yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. lady <laughs> yeah i mean like i don't mind i don't mind talking about tattoos if it's like an interest in tattoos or like an interest in like the process or the, like there's you know, a, a lot of surrounding stuff to it like you know if you're passionate about something you don't mind like talking about but it's like you know you don't need to hear with these ideas from people that are like are never gonna ever get tattoo like yeah. and you you're never gonna see him again and it's like the first and only thing that they'll speak to you about and yeah. like you can't do anything with these people like and yeah. you're just like yeah <laughs> it's like fucking 2 30 at night on a i'm on a night out and it just yeah. allow it like <laughs> but can't complain like you know yeah. it also gets like the ball rolling in a conversation like that you know so well, he just like, walks up and says hi i'm monty i'm british <laughs> and that's it <laughs> I mean, you have to add the british part like. yeah you just say you're, you just introduce yourself with your accent it's a cheat code dude it's this damn cheat code um all right let's switch it up the other day we were talking and i think we stopped you mid-conversation because <laughs> you said that i think you dropped out of school at 14 years old yeah i got kicked out when i was 14. all right let's pick it up from where we left off so dude you got kicked out of school Sound. at 14 years old what happened um what happened um it was the school kind of turned to shit. like you we got this new headmistress that was like she just like came in and changed every part of like why a lot of people chose that school sort of thing um so she was a bitch um basically yeah. um she'd done it to like three schools in the area she was like notorious for just coming in and ruining children's lives um so like you know obviously we were also like just you know kids or whatever like well was this a private school or like what's the no, like, like public just school like, yeah, yeah public school like um well public school i think public school in england is technically private school i think we switch it the other way around but like private is still private but yeah, like no, it was just like a normal state normal school, school. yeah paid yeah, for by government like, taxes um, yeah yeah and yeah like it how did it all come around like we had this graveyard that was like around the corner from the school like right next door like yeah. you know so we used to like smoke in there in the mornings and like after school and stuff and they kind of started picking up on this and like a few of us got excluded like one um one day we were meant to be going on like a school trip or something like that and like they came in and like caught loads of us like i think this was a couple of weeks beforehand like caught loads of us smoking and didn't let us go on a school trip and sent us all home and blah 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 like so that was kind of so they were proper on the watch out for this like spot anyway 
So they were just always kind of there. And like in this time, like the headmistress had started, she'd wrote a list, like apparently one of the boys had like seen this list and it was like a list of like the kids that she didn't want at the school anymore effectively. And that was a big fucking, it was quite a big list. Like, so they'd like sort of been catching us there and stuff like that. And like we, you know, for whatever reasons, like um, then one day we were having this argument with, the worst teacher that like uh, one of the worst teachers I ever had like shout out Mr. Wood because he's a dickhead like <laughs> um and we were having this argument it just it wasn't going nowhere and like it was just about weed like you know and you're having like you're an ignorant little kid arguing the like pure pros of it and you've got some ignorant adult arguing all the negatives about it so it's obviously gonna yeah there's a middle ground to life and like we yeah. well, we probably should have been in that probably but so next day we come into school and for, like we like touch the door and like like 25 of us all got that were all kind of around and affiliated with each other and stuff like we all got ripped out a lesson like immediately like we touched the like all had our phones and bags taken off us and at that point I'm like right, I'm kind of fucked now like um and yeah they just separated us all day didn't really know what was going on forced us to write like do you know what i mean G giving us like statements to write and like making us write stuff like and like f do you know what i mean being like this isn't enough like here's a new one and stuff like and this was going around in certain this was fuck this was like four or five hours deep into the day you know no idea what's going on still and then like individually and we like there's only one or two of us in each room they'd like fully split the 25 of us up or whatever yeah. and then i think they might have in that time like searched our bags maybe but they like phoned the police in um and because i think they maybe had to search like bags with like police present um you know like called like our parents in and stuff like that and yeah went through my bag and I, you know there was a lot of statements saying that i was selling weed like i I will to this day say I wasn't like because I wasn't like but fucking people are gonna say what they're gonna say so there was a lot of like and I just had like what like maybe five grams of weed four grams of weed like not a lot at all like that was all like search for police was like fucking fuming and then they were like had a discussion or whatever and police wanted to like take me down to the station and like process me and everything for like selling weed and you know being in possession and everything but i think we've got a weird little loophole like where if it happens on school property and it's not like over a certain degree yeah like they school can actually take the authority of it kind of thing so they can make the choice of which way it goes and because of like the opportunity to come away and stuff like that like you know it was the only probably decent thing that, sh that the headmistress did like at least while I was around and she was like you know just take it as you being like completely kicked out and blah 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 and instead of like going that way because she did appreciate that I wouldn't be able to come to like America and stuff like that if that was on there so that was kind of and that kind of followed into a pretty crazy like few months of life from there like which yeah that's probably for another time but yeah that's uh yeah yeah that was a interesting period and yeah and then i didn't go back to school um just because had the opportunity to be away was already sort of doing the sort of you know r wrong stuff like and folks at that point were just like at least my ma but yeah my folks were just like it's gonna be better to just get him the fuck out of this like town and shit, and we just let him go skiing, like, cause education and shit's always there. Your body's not like you can't be young. If you're gonna fucking fuck yeah. about, you might as well go do it in the mountains and not in like some shitty little city, like. And so that was like a that was like a blessing. My mum always said that like life kind of changed from that day. I don't think school was ever set up for really? someone like me, <laughs> like yeah, you know. So, uh, what's your family like? Mom, dad, you got any siblings? Ma, dad, sister, and sister's just had a baby, so. Oh, sick, your uncle. Uncle Monty, let's go. Uncle Monty, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, no, a nice little small family, yeah. A few, yeah. like, uncles and stuff like that, but yeah. uncles, aunts, but yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty small little tight-knit family. So, what were your parents like growing up? 
like because they're tattoo artists so like i'm just thinking in terms like, so, like oh you got busted with weed were they like super upset about that or like just I like mean, what was their I th- general personalities like i think like i think you know i i mean i got suspended from like growing up they were always doing different stuff you know they're like kind of hustlers my mom is like a pretty like through and through hustler she won't money doing whatever you know so it was like a stream of different companies like doing different stuff like they had like when i was growing up they were transitioning from selling vintage clothes into their own clothing company and stuff like that and they had quite a big shop in canterbury that was like a sex shop clothing vintage piercing so it was like a couple floors yeah. had a few stuff they ran it majority themselves and then they started getting into piercing like really early days and my dad was like you know hand, like through and through the piercer of that company for like you know 20 years sort of thing you know yeah. like um and she ran the whole company um like through and through uh trained people did some piercing did some tattoos early days as well but um then yeah then started bringing in artists to like work in the shop because it was such a busy environment so they was that was like pretty cool but yeah there was just like there was so much stuff going on so it wasn't like i just kind of realized that working for yourself and stuff gives good opportunity like they yeah. got to have time off together and go do some stuff and you know not yeah. not be tied to someone else which is kind of like that was a nice thing to grow up seeing um definitely makes you not want to be in that little box like as working well. for someone yeah <laughs> yeah you know um but it was a nice like it was a nice unit like for you know i mean yeah like yeah. it was a it was an interesting family like for sure i think we well, were that's quite just such a crazy environment to grow up in yeah yeah i think we were quite like a lot was very 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 unique um a lot of you know a lot of times like you know i think a lot less would have broken fa- a lot of families you know yeah. so to still be the sort of unit that like we are and stuff yeah. like at this point like is you know says something surprising and yeah says yeah. something for sure like it's yeah. yeah i think that in itself can yeah can be quite a powerful yeah. powerful thing for a family as well so that's kind of nice like um but can't ask for really more out of like yeah. folks are the best yeah. like yeah for sure what a crazy yeah dude what a crazy environment to grow up in when i picture england i picture very prim and proper so when i hear about a family that owns a sex shop and a tattoo and piercing shop yeah. like were your neighbors horrified of you guys i mean i think <laughs> like like the sex shop part like when me and my sister were like at school i think that started to become like that started to, and you know and it was all right when we were actually young yeah but then my sister's six years older than me i think okay. when she got into high school and whatever yeah when she started getting into yeah like sort of secondary school and that was a thing like i think our folks were like <laughs> yo maybe that's like yeah yeah maybe this is a bit much now i got uh i actually got suspended like from school when i was uh, i think i was maybe four or five years old because they used to have like these sex voucher booklets that you do you know what i mean you'd give to your like partner as like a joke on valentine's day or something like that but i just seeing fucking naughty cartoons and i'm like haha i've got a show that so i take these about this voucher book in and like yeah get that fan i think that might have had something to play because do you know what i mean when you're like five six year olds getting like (laughs) suspended for like yeah like (laughs) sexual material that age like yes like like, maybe we either have to keep this under wraps or maybe we can just continue to do all the other stuff that we're doing and maybe take a back burner on that but that was always funny growing up with like all the old fucking stock about the house and stuff you know like (laughs) yeah did your boys ever ask you to hook them up? Like, yo, grab me one of them, grab me one of them fake butts and oh, bring, it, bring man, it to school like, tomorrow. <laughs> I, I remember, I remember, like, when we were, like, I uh, must have been, like, maybe 14 or 15 or something at this point, and I like, was getting super stoned in the garden, like, driving around the lawnmower, like, throwing, like, like rubber vaginas at each other and stuff <laughs> like that. Just, like, <laughs> so jokes, man. Like, yeah, but I think, yeah, one or two of the boys definitely took one of those, those home and had their way with them. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny, dude. Um... 
All right, we'll get this back on track. So <laughs> the skiing, because okay, so you when you dropped out of school, yeah, your first thing is I'm going skiing. So let's yeah. reverse, let's rewind a little bit. Yeah, how'd you first get into it? Because England, yeah, ain't that hilly. Pretty flat, especially down southeast corner where I'm from. There's really not a lot going on. Um, so I was just like family holidays, really. Um, you know, once, twice a year sort of thing. We used to go to Chamonix quite a lot. So like, you know, we drive down in an RV. I'd pretty much bang on size to this like we my folks used to import them from um america and we used to use them for like a year or two and then they'd sell them for like the same in pounds as dollars so they'd make money on that sort of thing so we used to just use those to go for holidays so we'd go pitch up in the in the like swimming pool in chamonix and that was like that was skiing really to me for like best part of like i started skiing maybe four or so and we would have started doing that maybe six, seven, and that was like that for like maybe five years or so. And then did a ski camp. Um, I had my nine, uh, my tenth birthday in Lax, like on my first like, sort of freestyle camp, like um, which was pretty sick. Um, like, uh, and yeah, after that camp, I was just like met some people that were kind of involved with the scene understood like what was going on a little bit understood that there was like you know maybe not like loads going on but there was definitely like there was a scene of some description um i then broke my ankle by falling out a tree pretty bad had an operation and stuff so i didn't ski until i was like 12 from there and then that was kind of it i went on the british free ski camps that were like they were run like very well at the time um there was like a really good scene for that so i spent like a month out in sas with with the camps and met like you know met half the boys that like are still some of my best friends to like this day met a bunch of people um and that was kind of yeah started going from there then folks were trying to figure out like how to get a bit more time on snow like outside of like like a holiday or so like so for the year so i then went to like um they contacted like a a race company that was based out in um chamonix and like asked if i could effectively like because they did school in there and then they let them go race so they asked if like we found someone that i could ride with that wasn't a part of them if i could come use them for like schooling and kind of so i did that for six weeks when i was like 12 no 13 or so and that was like i feel like that was like a big thing and they were like yeah that's fine but he will have to ride with us like one two days a week so that was like super good for my skiing in general so i did sort of six weeks of that and then yeah like i think then i got picked up got sponsored first sponsor um for skis and that and yeah then you just start like competing at like the brits events and stuff which yeah. still running now good way to kind of get through stuff in the uk you know like start understanding some contests and start meeting some people so did that after and then yeah just that's that's kind of like that was kind of the basis of getting into skiing for me like i still did a bunch of dry slope stuff and indoor stuff but like I'm quite in far in the southeast corner and there's really not a lot there so you know shouts to my folks for taking me places like around the country and that because yeah there's like really fuck all else like that I could have done in those sort of down times um and then yeah that was kind of that was kind of the like entry point and then yeah I went to Canada for the first time with my ma like for a few weeks which is like sick and that was like first introduction to like oh shit this is like these are fucking jumps this is like you know like you know there's like a there's a difference it's like disneyland sort of thing you know yeah and that was like you start actually doing stuff at that point because yeah you've not seen stuff like that you get all excited and yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah wow man damn uh who were uh this is interesting yeah because like, who were your influences growing up? Were you super into, like, the American scene? Or were, did Europe have its own scene that you were super into? I mean, I think because the UK scene's so small, you know, my introduction to, like, 
proper freestyle, like was being coached by like James Woods, like Woodsy, Paddy Graham, like they were the coaches for the British free ski camps at that, that yeah. like for the summer and stuff because they were still riding themselves and like you know so. I mean, you you know when you're twelve or so, like, and you're riding with those sort of people, it's obviously like you. It's like you want to be them, yeah. It's a you know you've got a big influence there immediately, and then like you're always kind of like you've. It's not completely out of like the realm. I feel like you know pro to like an American is like still. It's like out of your grasp. It's not out of your grasp, but like they seem far away because the scene's so massive. You've all got your own stuff going on, whereas like scene's so small there that you can be just inspired by all of the like you know. When I was fourteen, I went out to like brick um with i was like the youngest person in the house by like good few years um good few years uh and like they were what i think the other young then the next youngest person would have been like 18 and then like i think up to like 25 26 you know so all of these people as well like i looked up to all of them because they were you know older yeah. sicker like just doing their thing and stuff like that you know so there was like there was enough to be inspired by, but then outside of that, you know, it was like step movies. They were always like, they were the the ones for me. And then obviously Henrik, B Dog, like Tanner, yeah. Mike Hornbeck and stuff like that. Like they were big, big, like big influences, you know, especially then the sort of transition into being like on Armada at like 14 or so, still very. Yeah you know malleable of mind like those people to look up to were like a very very solid and yeah they were kind of they were that was all i really like all i really watched in skiing for yeah like a while you know like yeah. i never i've never watched too much in some ways like yeah. um but yeah i don't know Tom Wallish and Tanner, I'd say they're the two, like, Americans, really, that, like, and I think they are pretty obvious yeah. influence on the sport, you know, to, yeah, like, inspire everyone. Yeah, Tom Wallish everyone. and Tanner Hall, like, yeah. holy crap, very obscure influences. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, did you say? I mean, we so when we first saw you, you were actually hanging out with Tanner. Was that the first time you met him? Yeah, first time I met him. Just uh, seems like a boy, like yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty chill. Like good to, yeah, good to, good to see him. Still loving life yeah. and loving skiing and yeah, yeah, it's sick, man. Like to see him off the screen doing his thing. It's like it's cool and yeah, yeah. riding with him is a bit of a. Yeah. Yeah. Surreal moment. But Trip, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you say hi to Tom today? We saw Tom today. I did not say hi to Tom today. He's nervous. I'm he's nervous. Little, he's I'm a little nervous. nervous. People gotta do their thing in it as well. Like He's I also like, working, yeah. yeah he's on the working mountain. way more than Tanner was. Yeah, 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 on the mountain to me, like that's when you know, if I see you in a parking lot, look at me saying fucking parking lot. If you see <laughs> What's if it, I what? see you in a car park, yeah. <laughs> like, um like I'll come say hello to you or whatever, but on the mountain I yeah. feel like everyone's doing their own thing, like yeah. you know. Even speaking to your homie on the mountain sometimes it can be like drop in like yeah. a little bit, you know. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's like that. Me and Twan just follow you around all day harassing you. And that in, in the mate. Yeah, but that yeah. Gi gives you a life along the way as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's like, you, yeah, it, it, you know, if someone like, if you're friends or whatever and it's like one or two, but like when you're someone like that has that much influence on such a small community, like up on a mountain, like it'd be so easy to spend your whole day just having someone come up to you being like, you're a skier. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, you know, like you just want to, you're all up there for the same reason. So let's go do it. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Is there any, uh, just thinking about the British scene, are there any like uh, classic crews from England or like you know like the urban movie from England that yeah. like, that are like classics that's like must watch, must know about? I mean, there hasn't been loads come out like you know of the UK. Like when I was kind of coming into the scene, the one mm, kind of main production company that was in the UK was kind of like you know they were kind of reaching whatever point that they had with skiing and they were yeah. transitioning into different parts of their life and, you know, more working in the industry instead of, like, riding for it kind of stuff. <laughs> so I 
that was a production company called Unity Productions. That was sick. We did some really cool trips, like especially the last couple of years. We went up to like Scotland, got like, you know, basically a private mountain, like for the last two weeks of the season up at Glencoe and they built us some like features and they were going on trips um, to like Poland and stuff like that and you know getting all involved in that but they were running those for a good few years and I was just in sort of maybe the last one maybe last two of them Um, but some of those movies are are super cool especially for what especially for the time where they were made like they in my opinion were like on par with you know a lot of movies that were coming out the boys shred you know the good set of boys and like some of those were like the reason that I got on Armada and stuff like that they were the sort of threw people to Armada and um, they were riding for him at the time and so was the production company they worked hand in hand and stuff like that so that was all that was pretty cool and they they had a big they had a big influence you know they were running contests in the UK and like movie nights and stuff and something like that is like definitely lacking in the UK scene now I think there is still I think there is a scene because I do occasionally go up to snow domes and I you know every so often like the last like few summers I've tried to go to every snow dome in the uk like at least like once or twice and just sort of had a nosy around to see what's going on and i'm always surprised at the level of riding for sure like it takes you by surprise but it doesn't seem like that community or there's like uh doesn't seem like there's i don't want to say ringleaders to it but like it doesn't seem like there's you know the few people where there's like direction going in that you know i think it's kind of it seems like they're kind of lo- like it seems a bit of a lost community at the moment, which would be nice when it finds its feet again. Yeah, damn, that's uh, you don't see much coming out of there. No. Like, and when I first met you, I asked if you were the dude that does the broken slides with yeah, the yeah, grab. Yeah, kill him off in. Yeah, Shout he's out, kill sick. Off in. He's, Let's go. Yeah, he's so dope. Yeah, for that. sure, for sure. One of the only media riders like yeah. effectively in the UK, and it goes to show like if you've got a snow dome next to you or a dry. So, I, another one I'll give shouts out to is Ro, um, Ro Emery. Like those two, for not really getting any time on snow like throughout the year and stuff like that. Like they're two of the only people that actually put out content like that and it's like it's cool to see you know because it does go to show you don't have to go away the whole time um it's a proper shame like um brayhead where killer muffin rides is just shut down and i think he's kind of petitioning for that shit to come back because that is a shame like that was the only one in scotland there's good dry slopes there but that was the only snow dome um and yeah, I mean, there's one not too far south, but Scotland's like probably got the strongest and best scene and involvement with each other and stuff like that out of the whole of the UK. So for them to yeah. lose the snow dome there is definitely, definitely a shame. Like that's yeah. not 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 fun, Mike. Dude, that's sad to hear that the yeah. UK scene is just like a drift at yeah. sea right now with like no direction. Yeah, yeah, just- yeah just flowing it makes sense though it's so yeah. flat dude i think as well like you know um i think the the it got a little bit muddled um in when um the olympics kind of came in because because it's quite a small scene um there are people that were running a lot of the camps and everything like that instead of being the sort of foot in the door to the industry that was super useful you know for everyone and for there to be that base they became part of gb and that got lost and then the team kind of got lost as well so then there was not really anything left because both sides had been kind of burnt a little bit and you know there's still there's still a couple of people coming through like for sure like i'm sure you'll see a lot of them especially a couple of the girls coming through ski and snowboard but yeah. you know like, yeah yeah <laughs> it's tough yeah it's tough like and i don't i don't envy the people like that are trying to run this shit but i don't really envy people yeah trying to orchestrate vast amounts of people yeah. in any job like no you know. it's tough yeah all right let's mix it up what is a uh so you mentioned that London got some snow, very rare. Mm-hmm. Do you have a dream spot in London? London um, town, isn't it? So a couple of years ago in COVID, in lockdown, um, was the first time I've been in the UK for winter in like 
10 12 years something like that yeah so that was kind of special a lot of snow came um just so happened that like i didn't really i was meaning to get my wick uh winch kind of up and running and i wasn't expecting it to snow like this in england so forgive me like <laughs> you know like he dropped the ball i yeah. dropped the ball super hard like <laughs> but um there was this spot that um it's uh the, it's like a really historic it's the city wall to canterbury and canterbury is like one of the you know oldest main it's like the head of the church of england i think of is course canterbury. Do. we read canterbury tales, canterbury tales yeah. in high school yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. worst thing we had to read yeah, it was so brutal for sure yeah. but these like <laughs> these city walls that all of this nonsense happened within yeah like big high ones that used to shoot bow and arrow off and stuff <laughs> like been looking at them for a long time yeah. never thinking i'd ever be able I to i think like, people in general have been looking at them for a long, oh yeah, yeah for like sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a really they've been looking at it for a while like you know scoping um, it yeah. yeah 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 some of them might have even been as scared as me looking at it <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah dude. um but yeah when it snowed there's like uh there's a mound um that's that just so happens to have a, a very small pile and when i say that this doesn't have a land and this is like this is like a you know 30 40 foot drop like off this city wall nearly to flat yeah and i did this thing maybe six times to try and like ride away from it properly and my legs were just slowly going through me i couldn't actually walk for like about three four days i was like yeah. you know holding the walls trying to get up the toilet and that like yeah. it was, oh, damn, it was yeah. like really bad i couldn't like walk for like a yeah. couple days because i wasn't i hadn't rode for a couple years because of everything that was going on and then yeah, trying to do that basically is one of the first things back to riding in a couple of years was probably not the like. Yeah. So I've still got I've still got that shot and that was like I've been looking at that for years, walking along this city wall for years, going, oh, I may just drop off this like. Yeah. You know? Other than that, like, not really. Like there is a few around, but I feel like you can't get too excited because it's not like scoping spots where you know there's going to be snow. Yeah. Because you would be looking at this for a really long. Yeah, time like, and yeah. it just never ever happened yeah. or England's so weird it would be like you get snow in an entire city and the one rail that you want to hit will just have rained in that 100 meter radius or whatever and yeah. there would be nothing like, oh wow it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting little weather system we have interesting <laughs> in it in it which is yeah for yeah. sure which is like, <laughs> oh my god England, so I love England, dude. Yeah, Been there a few times. It's just it's so interesting. So many damn people live in such a small area, for and sure. you guys all sound so different from one another. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. But then again, like I spend a lot of time in Switzerland, and this is this is all this is always messed because they speak like four languages in Switzerland. Yeah, which is kind of crazy for one country to speak like. What's what's the fourth? It's English, it's like, German, no, English. German, German, French, French Italian. Then, oh no, sorry, not English. German, French, Italian, and I believe it's called Romanche. It's like a combination oh. of like all three kind of thing. There yeah. might be one or two more dialects floating around as well, but it's kind of it's quite spread out. It's not comparable, but I'm always like, imagine if London was split into four languages, the carnage that would fucking yeah happen in that brutal. It would like yeah, yeah, it would be crazy, and then. You just spend time in a country where the the people have to, you know, speak English because they do speak English in reality. Because you know, yeah. you do occasionally meet two people, both from Switzerland, that like have just yeah. only learnt the one language or both learnt the wrong one or something, and yeah. they have to talk in English because that's their both that's their closest language to each other. You know, yeah. so that's kind of weird. That's Dude, weirder that's... than the accents changing from like. Yeah. Yeah county to county and town to town for me because well, that just I, seems normal at this point you know yeah i want to ask you something about that yeah all right call out time this yeah. is for the english listeners yeah, yeah, yeah. what what city in england has the worst accent <sighs> like you're listening to the talk you're like oh jesus christ someone shut this guy up <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard like it is kind of hard um and it's going to sound kind of generic, but like Birmingham accents are kind of... That's bit, what I've heard yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not like... How do they sound? Can you do a Birmingham impression? No, but it's... Come on, do, give do, us do, one. Do, 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 do. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> mate, honestly, like, once you hear it, after I... Like, play that noise again, and then you can yeah. hear it, and you'll... Yeah. 
it's like I can't do it with words, but I can do it with sounds, yeah. and that's all you feel like you hear sometimes as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's it's interesting, and I don't want to like I I like accents, you know, like yeah. I like hearing them like quite a lot. If it had to, if I had to pick, maybe Birmingham, maybe that, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, some places you go, like, it's not so much the accent, more the individual with the accent that yeah. you want them to shut up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I got the flip side for you. Yeah. So listen, all the British ladies, I, I guarantee you zero will be listening to this unless it's your family or f- close friends. Yeah. British ladies, every single act, British accent sounds good on a woman. But, like, what's your favorite What's your favorite accent? Like, if so, like if someone's talking to you, you're like, oh, I could listen to you say anything to me. Because uh, it's, it's that awesome. What, from the, from from the, from the UK? And then we could do uh, it international if you okay. want. Okay. Um, because some of you are, are right, prim, and proper, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah very posh. Like, yeah. There's something quite calming about, um, like, uh, like a kind of soft-spoken Scottish lady. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful, yeah. yeah. I fi- find, like, a lot of people like Irish accents. I don't know why I find them patronising, but <laughs> stop talking to me like that. Like, no, I'm joking, but, like, yeah. Yeah, so like, <laughs> yeah not, not their fault. That's, that's a me problem, you yeah. know, like, um, but... So, what about, but, yeah. out, what about outside the UK? Like, what, what... <laughs> Worst accent, best accent outside the UK. I've heard a couple shockers out here, to be honest. Really, like, <laughs> in America? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's hard. It's hard. I, it all comes down to who's saying it, you know. Yeah. I, you could eat up a horrible accent if it comes from the right person. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Like, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Damn. <laughs> Um, dude, I feel like we're off the ra- we're off the rails, just wandering around in the woods right now with this with the direction of this interview. I don't really think that the, you, I think you should have expected this. So. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of what we've been asking you all week, anyways. Um, no, this is dope. This is, I mean, dude, I just love <laughs> cultural differences are Monty's so, dude, they're so interesting. And Monty's such a homie, and you know, when did we meet? Like three days ago. Yeah, we've only known each other for like 72 hours or something like that. I feel like I've known you forever. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens this year, though, you know? Like, yeah. a few little common interests, like, break down some barriers, and then all of a sudden you're boys forever. Which yeah. Is like a, it's just a level of trust. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, I got a question for you we didn't talk about. So you made it to Super Unknown Finals at some point in your life, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. so what age was that? I was 21. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was four years ago, right? Yeah, you're four years ago. Yeah. Um, um, and who were you riding with at the finals? Like, who else was in it that year? Who else was there? Yeah, Blake Wilson won that year, which okay. I think he was kind of like, you know, I think it made a lot of sense. I think it also took, because he hadn't been in a park, supposedly, like, for, you know, like two seasons or so, but he was just, yeah. like, throwing it down the most consistent, like, throughout the week, you know, and I think... I think everyone would have put him like at some point in their voting thing just for the sheer yeah you know shock value of him like smashing it all week and then yeah ended up winning um but yeah uh anton linden was there swedish oh, guy um yeah a guy called andrin um i'm not gonna attempt to pronounce his surname but he's yeah. from switzerland and he's an absolute yeah. legend you know such a nice guy um a few other people dane kirk um like Jonas Sipola, okay. um, Carson Kerr. Um, oh, he was in it that year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, like it was funny as fuck. Like it was a good, it was a good week. Don't get me wrong. Of like, course, dude. You guys are partying hard. <laughs> yeah, to a point. Like you know, I was fucking honestly like f- for the for the longest time that Super Unknown was a thing. Like that I was watching for years. I didn't, I didn't ever know that they actually went to a location. Like yeah to like film a week i thought it was just a i thought it was a purely and it was a production company i thought it was just an edit contest so yeah. i always watched these like edits like never really so when i got it in my head i'm gonna go like i just wanted to get to like the finals of like and then i actually clocked on to the fact like you know i was like oh shit this is like an actual event you know so just kind of making the edit for me was like you know when you kind of reach your goal and you're like well that was what I was doing. I was making this edit. Like, what? Like, what am I doing now? Like, and then I got there. I was like pretty jet lagged. Like, in my opinion, the person who probably could have won that week, or maybe should have, like, won if he got all of his days, is Yona, like the Scandi guy. Um, Rise from Armada. He's an 
absolute animal but like he was like completely bedridden like he was so sick for like half the week and like i feel like half of us like were we were just like i feel like it, we were just run down didn't seem like just what, any of us traveling or did you guys think, get sick or i think what? so it was like the most international crew that they'd like ever had like we'd come from like all corners of the world like and i think it was just it's kind of like a lot when you're not you know you're not taking care of yourself and you're doing stuff and you're staying up late and that like it's yeah. so it was a it was an interesting week for me you know yeah. like but i was kind of I was deflated after the edit, if I'm being perfectly honest. And then I also, like, there was, like, one trick I had well in mind, like, for going there. And after I got that, I got it as well. And I was like, oh, it's happened again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like shit, what do I do shit, now? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck do I do now? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But I was also, like, I feel like at that point I was at a bit of a... I was kind of a bit of a strange relationship with skiing, <laughs> like, as well, you know. Yeah. Kind of... You you're trying to force yourself to do some stuff sometimes like instead of just riding for riding's sake and i think yeah. getting back to riding for riding's sake is a really important thing to do with yeah skiing because you can get to some of like the places that you really want to be and all of a sudden you're actually you don't really give a fuck like which yeah sucks sometimes you know so dude no that's super real like you're working for a goal and then you're like <laughs> yeah well, I got that, and it ain't even that good. Like, mm. but that too. Okay. But it is. You it know, is, but it's, but it like is, but it's not what you like, expected. Yeah, it's like, well, like, what do I even want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've done something to yourself instead of just like allowing yourself to just enjoy skiing for like what? Skiing sake. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's like. So you and you got sponsored by Armada at fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. Oh, fuck, dude, that's, yeah, I think that's my, like, like the my Flanagans, first, dude. You guys are super young. My my uh, my first Armada ski was their like ten year anniversary, like A R seven sort of thing. The like red yeah. and black, the Armada one. So that was yeah sick, you know. And I think they've just hit twenty years as well. So wow, pretty 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 long time, Mike. Yeah, yeah. pretty nice one. Yeah, like, amazing company. That was always, like, the dream, you know? That was, like, I've hit, like, a few of those little ones. Like, however big or small that they've been, it's, like, it's been nice to be a part of something that I can say that I've hit some of those, like, dreams. Because yeah. Amada's definitely been the, the company for a lot of people, I think, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, Talk about a big name getting yeah. sponsored by them, yeah. And I just got a I just got a 14-year-old on the team from England as well. Oh, sick. So, I'm so you're giving it back now, yeah. Giving it back, like, so yeah. that's exciting to, yeah. it's exciting to see, exciting wow. to see some stuff come. Have you guys done, so obviously they, like, you're, I mean, you're riding, all your whole kit's Armada pretty much besides your personal brand, which maybe we could talk about if you want to. But like, have you, have you guys done like a European crew, like movie, like have you, what's the extent of like your involvement with what they've been doing? So, like, I've, I've had, like, communication with them over the years and stuff like that. Like, I do work in a bit of a, like, middle ground, I think. Um, but I went on, like, a product shoot with them, like, yeah. with, like, Cora and Quinn and, yeah. like, Kimbo and stuff like that. Um, that was, like, super sick. And that was, like, they got me out of, they got me out of England during COVID. Like, yeah. at that point, they, like, did, like, some paperwork and everything like that. And that got me for the first time out in like even out of the house in like six eight months or whatever Europe you know crazy. so like yeah. that's like that was like a fucking that I, I was ready to like at that point i was like really like pretty much ready to like never ski again you know and then like yeah. just randomly had a thing of like like in a week or two do you want to come do like this product shoot and stuff like out and um absolute and i was like fucking yeah. let's go you know so that was like nice like after being on the um team for a while you know but i also like i kind of lost like direction you know i wasn't sure if i wanted to compete wasn't sure if i wanted to like film didn't know the the and then yeah yeah super unknown kind of blew that back to maybe people want to see some stuff and then yeah covid and brexit came and yeah shat all over that really and yeah. then i don't want to use that as any sort of excuse because you know people have still been doing their thing you know but i think especially in the uk a lot of my friends that like i've grown up skiing with and stuff like that they've just got stopped riding now as well you know and for different reasons i think some of them resent the sport i think some of them just don't see a point in it i think you know some people like kind of lost touch with a few things and it's kind of nice to still be it's kind of weird to like be one of the like, it's like last old man standing. heads, like yeah. you know, of like it now, and it's like 
don't know if it should be that way just yet like you know but like yeah it's like you're the last man standing but like a few years too early yeah 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 you know? yeah like almost. you're only 25 and all of a sudden you're the old head like yeah that's not the case at all over here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But then there's like that one thing that keeps bringing you back in yeah like, for sure it just happens it's not something you plan or nothing yeah yeah it's always the way yeah, and what it's keeps like, you like i mean you're like one of the last guys standing from england like what I think for me, it's like, I don't think, because like the contest route and everything like that, that was never like, intri- I don't think I'll ever look back and be like, oh no, like why didn't I push to try and go to the Olympics or anything like that? That's never gonna, yeah. but like knowing what I can do on skis and like knowing my like day to day like potential, I think it's like a shame to not have like a, like a really solid like project or two to kind of step like away from yeah. that I can like have and look back or like at some point because I feel like not having that would be the thing that like so I have been slowly over the last like year or so kind of gathering shots but every time I get them I like I outdate them and stuff and just by I've doing just something been, better yeah. yeah and I've just been getting like I've just been getting what feels like back into skiing to this level you know because like having like a few years off like and then only getting 90 days in Europe not vaccinated so this is my first like only two weeks ago oh no only like a month ago could i've even come to america yeah you know so like couldn't use that as an option europe was like shut down so i go for you know a month to three months like the last year or two but you know you don't want to go and start shooting like urban when you've not rode for years and that'd be like the that'd be your like step back into skiing yeah so then i go use my like 90 days or like my only 30 days left for the season which has been for the last like couple years like can't go use that to try and shoot a project and ride street because you know like i'm i don't bounce anymore you know it takes me recovery time it takes me time to get back into stuff and yeah like to just go do that so i but i feel like my grounding now i've like really kind of put a lot of groundwork kind of back in for skiing i think mentally more than anything which has been important and i think for the season coming like i should just be able to smash this project out without like any real drama because i think i've really i've like clocked into where i can be at what times and like like actually made a plan like it's like only having like a having a time scale to everything i'm doing is like really forced me into having to like sort out my life a little bit and figure out where i want to be at what points and yeah now i've like smoothed that out and had the time to do that i think just putting it into action so it's kind of nice it gives you drive to go make some money it gives you drive to go spend it all doing nonsense so yeah can't ask for more dude <laughs> what a deep cut of an episode dude yeah. yeah like for real i think we could end it at that dude there's so many great things like we could have talked about jib league or whatever but we've been going for an hour i think that's good nice some kid's gonna listen to this and be like can you believe that monty is on this like it's (laughs) especially since you've taken some time off skiing super random super deep cut stoked but uh dude i cannot wait to see that yeah yeah that's gonna be super sick uh would you? Did you want to say something? You're just yeah. Okay. Uh, one viewer question yeah. from the audience. We don't want to. We don't want to miss this up. Tuan, what do you have to say? Uh, what's the name of your clothing brand? Oh, uh, it doesn't really. I kind of rep with my name in it. So, like, my name is Monty Wright. Um, brand is kind of just comes under Wright. Spell it. W R I T E. Um, and that's kind of I go under Mr. Wright. I make music. There'll be like music coming with that project. There'll be clothes. It will be coming like under a nice little package of, you know, a little explosion of creativity, hopefully. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Dude. Ryan, you got any of your questions for him? Any quick hitters? Pass that over to him. I don't really got any questions, but just the past couple of days hanging with Monty, he's a special person for sure. Yeah. Thank you. I do appreciate that. You boys are sick as well. Thank you for welcoming me into your little campsite and that. It's, it's yeah. sick. It's sick. Yeah. Dude, that was awesome. Thank you, Monty. That was, no, that was a lot of fun. thank you guys. A lot of fun. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the Monty Project. Mr. Right on Instagram. He's the truth. His clips are insane, dude. So- road yeah just go just check him out dude monty's the fucking truth all right you guys peace out safe